Good morning and God bless you on this Wednesday morning. Today's the last day in our Can, Relate, Can You Relate series that I'd like to talk to you about Jeremiah. And when you think about Jeremiah's ministry, and really as we talked yesterday, 40 years where for the most part his message was not a message of good news or hope. And you think of how tiring that would be, how discouraging, warning people, arguing with them, reasoning with them, pleading with them, anything to keep them from having to experience what God had made clear to him would happen if they didn't repent and change their ways. And yet in the midst of Jeremiah, God still spoke a word of promise and a word of hope. And I'd like to share with you two of my favorite passages from Jeremiah, that even in the midst of the warnings, there's words of great encouragement and comfort and promise. The first one, you've, you've heard me on these daily devotions talk about it uh, quite a few times, I think. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. And the second passage is from Jeremiah 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. What a promise. You know, I'm going to work through them backwards today, but that passage from Jeremiah 31, the promise of a new covenant, and it wouldn't be based on our faithfulness and on our obedience as the first covenant had been. You remember that covenant with Moses, if you obey, you will be blessed. If you disobey, you will be punished and cursed. This is going to be a covenant that's going to be written on their hearts. In other words, God is going to do something so amazing and wonderful that his law will be on our minds. It will be written on our hearts. It will be what we most desire to do. And it's not because somebody comes along and teaches us, but that there's an inward transformation that happens in human beings. I think about the promise that Jesus gives that anyone who believes in him is a new creation. The old is gone. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And part of that new creation is a new way of thinking and a new way of experiencing the grace and the love of God as we see ourselves as loved and forgiven, redeemed people of God. And part of the work of the Holy Spirit that God puts in our hearts through Jesus is that it changes what we want to do. I think of Philippians chapter 2, this one little phrase where it says, For it is God who is at work in you to will and do according to what pleases him. You think about that, the power of the Holy Spirit changing us from the inside out so that things that we used to want to do, the sinful things, the selfish things, the vain and prideful things that divide us from other people and cause all kinds of collateral damage in our life, we simply no longer want to do those things. There's an inward change that changes the way we behave outwardly. And this is part of the promise that Jeremiah, even in the midst of all of the warning and judgment, he's given them this good news, this hope, 
that there will come a time, there will be a day when God is going to do something amazing in their eyes. And then that the passage I read first, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, there's the invitation. You know, God has good plans for us. God never desired to punish us. He never desired to see us come to destruction. His plans have always been to bless and cause us to prosper and enjoy the life he's given us and enjoy this world he made for us to care for. And so God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And how many of us today need to hear that word that God wants to give us hope and a future when so often the things we read on the news and we hear about around us, it sounds like there's only doom and gloom. God says, no, I've come to give them hope and a future. And then the next verse, then you will come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You know, the reality is for most of us, we spend a lot of time stressing and worrying and sometimes conniving and scheming of how to work ourselves out of our problems or how to manipulate and figure out ways to get what we want. And the reality is the whole time God says, hey, I'm God. I created everything. Why don't you talk to me about it? Why don't you ask me for those things that you want so much? And if they are good for you, I will find a way to bless you with them. And if they are not good for you, trust me, you don't want them and I'll protect you from that. It comes down to trusting that God really is good and he really cares about us. And then the last verse, verse 13, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. I think about that. What a gift it is to know that God is really declaring in his word through the prophet Jeremiah, you don't need to worry. If you really want to know me, I will reveal myself to you. If you want me and you're, you're willing to put me first in your life, trust me, I'm not hiding. You will find me. Think about that. That's the God of the universe, the God who created everything and everyone, the God who gave you and me life. And he says, I will be found by you. What a gift. Now, when I think of can you relate to Jeremiah and this hard life of having to be what you might call the disciplinarian, always reminding the people of the law of God, warning them of the consequences of rebellion and breaking the law. How refreshing it must have been those times that Jeremiah was actually able to give a word of hope and encouragement to the people. Made me think it's kind of a lot like parenting. You know, you raise your kids and sometimes it's hard work to teach your kids to teach them what is right and wrong, to hold them accountable, to find that balance between love and affection and affirmation, as well as discipline and holding them accountability and teaching them consequences for their actions. And sometimes it seems like when I look back on my life as a parent, we had wonderful times raising the three boys, uh, but there was times where it was hard work. And, and yet in the midst of it, those wonderful times where you could remind the kids, yeah, the things we're teaching you, they may seem unpleasant now, but they're going to be good for you in the future. If you learn these lessons while you're young, you can have so many blessings that come out of them as you grow older. And isn't that kind of like what Jeremiah has said, you know? warning of the people of God about the consequences of their sin and inviting them to walk with the Lord so that they could walk and experience God's blessings. So may you be blessed as you listen to God and as you surrender your life to him and obey everything he commands you to obey. May he bless you and enrich you in every way. Amen.